this is the thing that I always talk about because again, I support like a certain level of gun control because I do believe like especially here in the state of California, like while it is annoying to take a firearm safety test, like it shows that you know the safety measures in your state. You know, like I actually I feel don't like, think that would be regulation at all. Exactly. Well, that's what I'm saying. I feel like that should be something across the United States. Whereas like there's plenty no, of people no, no, who are uh, being like. The government requires you to take this course after you buy the gun when before okay then it's regulation but if it was like once you get your gun you have to take this class it technically wouldn't be regulated yeah but see the thing is for me like there's plenty of gun control measures that are currently instituted in the state of california that i like the dumbest thing in the world yeah they're really stupid but there's also plenty of things where i'm like okay like it's not that bad and i understand it like for example background check for ammo like i really think it's annoying because it's like ah every single time you have to have you know run a background check for ammo but i also get it because it's like okay it's another thing to keep criminals from going into gun stores and buying ammo right um but with this whole like mass shooting it's just like annoying for me because i want to see active change and all we see every single time is this the same debate over same to over ban over. guns we need to ban ar-15s we need to ban hang we need to do we whatever need to make it to where if someone wants to shoot up a school, it's pretty much a death sentence for them. I know, but even then... Like, armed guards. Like, who would have thought of that? Yeah, who would have thought... Exactly. Like our high school, it's not... It's actually very wealthy. But our high school, they did... Their solution to parents being concerned about gun control was blocking off the school to where there's only technically one way in and one way out without secure... One checkpoint... It's like that just and there's security for and like, there's police officers on campus. Went, we went through a school shooter threat and that bomb threats real, and bomb threats. Yeah. And they for a while had us. Remember when they had us all going out the exit on Meadows? Yeah. See, the whole school. I was like, I, I had a doctor's kids. appointment that day. So y'all, I remember seeing yeah, everybody's yeah. like Snapchat stories. And people I was were like hopping over, you know, those tall baseball fences. Yeah. People were hopping over the fences and landing on the ground and immediately seeing cops with like. ARs and shit. Yeah. And like SWAT teams because they were treating it very real. And well, yeah, because I think, yeah, I think that was like the bomb threat one. And they were like, like bomb squad showed up at the school and yep. everybody's like, whoa, um, this is very real. And everybody was like scared as shit because, you know, you have for a fully, few minutes. Yeah, like fully kitted <coughs> fucking officers actually, walking through the crowd. And you're yeah. just like, are we going to die? I think that seeing the officers scared people more than the threats because they were like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, no one took it seriously because that was, like, our 20th one by that time. Like, yeah. I'm not exactly. The amount of times that our school got, like, shooter, shooter threats, yeah. bomb threats, all our, kinds uh, of shit. Some people did get it? arrested and charged, remember? I'm not going to say their names. Yeah, Two people did get yeah. arrested and charged at our school for that shit. Uh, what was it? I think our sophomore year, we had, like, 12 bomb or twelve bomb and shooter threats within, like, 10 days. Yeah. It was, like, within a two-week Because some crazy was like typing it online so yeah, oh, yeah didn't yeah, want to yeah. have to take their finals because it was coincidentally finals week like right <laughs> yeah. finals. Yeah, but so. see the point that i'm making is with that is that when people see like an issue people immediately were telling their parents and they told the police and the police took it very seriously whereas especially in this case that guy they wanted like teachers wanted him committed to a mental health like facility but like yeah. nobody listened no to him right and so it's my my point is especially with i think the last major shooting with all the students that came out and like you know started the whole gun control thing it was the same thing the dude had the police called on him numerous times and he had made threats to his parents and to others and then nobody did anything about it and then these shootings happen and then the first thing that everybody like looks at is oh let's ban guns and it's like that's it's banning the AR what scene and it's like Okay, what happens if you ban the AR-15? They're just going to get another different AR-style gun. Okay, Or they're going to get that, a handgun because a handgun gonna, can do the same amount of fucking things as a fucking... Uh, most mass right. shootings happen with handguns. Maybe they get a Tech 9. But no, like overall, the whole point is that like instead of looking at other like areas of the issue, like while guns are a part of the issue in the it's sense of... It's a cultural of, issue. Yeah, it is. It's a very much a mental health cultural issue. And nobody... That's the thing is, you know how it is. Nobody takes mental health seriously. Somebody will go down the street saying, I'm a kill everybody and everybody's just like well that motherfucker crack and whatever and they leave it alone and that's essentially what's what's happening with these school shootings is you have people who are crazy who have demonstrated they are crazy have been reported to police police do nothing shooting happens ban guns it's like yeah and it's what are you depressing that this is becoming the normal now exactly like, we can't like we can't get past go and actually being an actor actually actively solving these things also how the f did this kid get that gun I mean, he, that's what I'm saying is 
the whole process is everybody saying like, how can an 18 year old be able to buy a gun like this? And it's like, at the end of the day, like you should be allowed to buy once you turn 18, you're of age. No, you yeah, can you get drafted, that's, whatever. That's not what but, I'm saying. But he was like a broke kid who was living at home. Oh, well, I guess that's how he can. I don't, I don't know how you, I don't know how he afforded it. But what I do think is that if he had been reported and committed or anything and got been declared mentally defective, then he would have, it would have showed up on his background check and he would have not been able to buy that gun. And that's my point. It's like nobody's using the current measures that are in place to keep crazy people from buying guns. If you have a friend that's like suffering from depression, he's talking about killing himself, saying that, you know, life is whatever, and you take it as a joke. I mean, you could legitimately, like that person could kill himself. And again, the majority of um, handgun deaths or um, firearm deaths in the country are suicides. It's like if you have a friend that's like genuinely you know, talking about suicide or is going through something, you can easily get them declared mentally defective. And if they have firearms, the police will come and take them. And um, if they don't have firearms, they'll be barred from getting firearms. Right. And that's like one of the things that nobody talks about. And it's like there are systems in place currently to prevent people with mental health. I actually find that the fact that that that's in place a l kind of worrying, but I think it probably for the most part is used well. Well, yeah, and essentially, it's not like, oh, Someone you get them. Sure it's not like I can say, like, oh, he's mentally way. defective, and they just take it away. I mean, it's like a process. Like, you go to a hospital, you know, there's there's reports done, you know, there's hearings. It's not like, oh, they're just going to take your guns away just because, right? There's like a process to it, right. right? But if someone, especially in this recent shooting where the teachers are like, this person needed to be committed, and he didn't, and then because of that, this crazy motherfucker was able to buy a gun and then go kill people, it's like... He should have never been able to buy that gun if people had done the right thing and had him committed, had him get declared mentally defective and all that shit. So, yeah, he should have doing the right thing. Those f cops did not do the right thing. Exactly. And that's another thing. That's how many another. shootings, how many shootings have happened where police have essentially like dropped the ball and allowed more people to fucking die because they didn't act quick enough, right? And that's my point. It's like they didn't. No, no, no. They didn't just not act quick enough. Well, there, there's actually a good argument to being like we shouldn't let emotionally compromised parents into an area, but they also didn't do anything for like what was it, forty minutes to an hour? Yeah, something like that. Um, and I understand that. I believe from the reports, it was like they were getting shot at with someone with a rifle. And they didn't have rifles, so they backed up and were like, "Hold on, let's wait for you know." someone that's kitted let's get our rifles whatever i understand that but at the same time like people are dying by the minute like I, you should rather it's the same thing of like, like I the can't same thing with the the buffalo well it's the same thing with the buffalo shooting that someone with a gun at, if they're focusing on someone else with the gun they're not focusing on others that are defenseless and while it's unfortunate and sad that the guy the uh, security guard at the buffalo shooting at the grocery store died there was multiple people after the fact that were on TV saying like, if he hadn't gone outside and like brandished his firearm and started shooting at him, we would have been dead because we would have never known that someone was walking into the grocery store with a gun, right? And so the point I'm making is with this shooting, if the officer stayed and continued to engage the school shooter, that would have been more time that he's not actively walking around and trying to kill students, you know? So overall, I just think that when looking at gun control and this whole gun control debate, we have to look at everything as a whole and not just look at, oh, banned guns. Because again, if you look at China, they have a mass stabbing problem. I think what, in 2014, it was 30 people dead, 130 injured, and 10 of those, 10, 10 of the dead, I think were kids, right? And that's China. Then Didn't Europe or Britain have like a acid problem? Yeah, they, 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 have they have an acid problem. People. They have a knife problem. There was, I think it was in like France, a dude used his car to drive through a crowd during a parade killed 80 people right there's the remember the other dude who used a crossbow and went on a uh, mass shooting with a crossbow i mean the point is is crazy people are always going to find a means to kill other people yeah right they're, they're mentally unstable if they want to find if they want to hurt people there are plenty of things that they can have access to aside from guns so you don't punish all of potential gun owners and current gun owners for a few crazy people who are shouldn't like who f have a litany of problems and need to be in mental institutions exactly and the other thing is 
everybody's always talking about like, oh, higher armed security. That's too expensive. I'm like, I'm sure if we can give Ukraine forty billion dollars, I'm pretty sure that we can hire security for all of our schools. Yes. Right. I'm, I'm pretty. I'm pretty positive on that. As There's well. numerous instances of um, all this sh where everybody's always talking about cost, 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 and it's like, why does nobody hold the government accountable for what they can do? Like, it's too expensive. They spend billions of dollars on fucking, you know, the military industrial complex. They spend in California billions of dollars on the homeless industrial complex. Gavin Newsom is spending six billion dollars a year on homelessness and it's not going to get solved. And yet people are looking at schools like eh, too expensive to hire some armed security. Yeah, those lives aren't worth protecting, I guess. It's exactly. Oh, the and then thing it was me. the other thing that recently came out was the defund the police shit and how they defunded like LAPD, right? And how there was like numerous like school because there's a division for the LA County schools, right? Uh, or the LA city schools. And so they had like short staff and they're talking about like, we, we don't have enough officers. Right. And now they're over here talking about like, are there enough officers to pe protect uh, children in su Southern California? And it's like, you defunded the police. Of course not. Like, what do you, what do you think? They, yeah, they, uh, there's fucking, fucking, I think having the, I like the idea of defunding the police so prominent in culture might've had an effect on those cops' decision making because they're 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 in Texas. They were fully funded, fully trained, or whatever the. F but having this idea out there might have been like what the f they, someone who is a cop probably is very often questioning, f like what's the point of being a cop, especially the cops that have to protect Lori Lightfoot. I fucking would not take that assignment. <laughs> that bitch can. Die. I know. Like I I do think that there is like a lot more officers that are just trying to get to their pension, and they're just like. Yeah. It's Once I job. get my pension, I'm done. Yeah. You know, because um, when you have a, a, a community that hates police officers, it's just it's it's not good. And essentially what we're seeing now and pretty much every state that's defunded police is a significant rise in crime. Like here in Los Angeles, they're fought, the gangs are telling their their people to follow people home, to target people with nice cars, nice watches, all that kind of stuff. And it's like, bro, we also have a D.A. that won't prosecute them once we arrest them so like everything is just it's not going well and that's why i like this whole gun control thing it's like i understand it but i also feel like there's plenty of people that have never been in a situation of like oh i could lose my life and i want to be able to defend my life right. and you know that's where their um you know their their views come from but like coming back to this mass shooting thing dude it's just like how many shootings need to happen for people to realize like there are multiple layers to this issue and there are already issues and like already systems in place that can be used to f keep people from getting guns if they're crazy yeah i feel like if they simply did more advertising on that oh my god the hotline would be blowing up they'd be like this said this is cool this said this is cool because that happened at our school yeah that happened at our school the kids got arrested and they i don't know what their sentence was but they got in trouble for that shit. we had multiple bomb threats we had multiple shooter threats it's i think like, they went easy on them because they were first time offenders and i think they were also underage too yeah yeah so either way i'm just saying there's systems in place ended up having to take responsibility and exactly they had to do something about and it. that's my point is there's already systems in place to keep people from doing this and the people that are not doing their job is law enforcement and a lot of politicians but that's normal which we should no longer accept as being the normal thing exactly so i mean i don't know overall what do you want to see like come out of this like, i want to see armed guards at schools and that needs to be one of the top priority like i said earlier i think it was the first thing i said when we started this conversation if someone wants to shoot up a school that should pretty much be a death threat that should pretty much be a death sentence my bad yeah and i could save everyone time. do you actually i have an interesting question mm -hmm. do you think we should give teachers guns so this is my thing a lot of people have issue with that because they think of teachers and they're like oh my god they're gonna shoot a kid what if they get mad one day and I mean, that's a very real thing. There are some, like, we've seen videos of some teachers who lose their shit on students and, like, hit them or whatever. I understand. But see, the, the thing is, especially with, like, the, the concealed carry process, um, I think it's a lot of people, they don't understand that. They don't, they don't understand, pro understand the process. So, like, especially here in California, it's like you have to go through the train. Here in California, Chicago, I know because, like, California, I live here. Chicago, I have family that lives there. I have family in Texas, too. But... Um, especially here in California, 
it's not like, oh, I want a concealed carry permit. Give it to me. It's like, no, you have to have a legitimate reason. You have to get interviewed. You have to go through a written training course and an actual firearms training course and a safety course. Right. So my thing is, if teachers go through that and it's more of a requirement because they're around children, they have to be e extremely careful not to take their gun off and leave it on their You know what I mean? Um, I'm for it because in the instance of someone actually coming into a classroom and a teacher having a gun, that is pretty much the only person at that point that could save the children, right? Like, there's no other, like, literally, if a, if a shooter's already in the school, he's shooting up shit, and he goes directly into a classroom, the last person that could do anything for literal children is the teacher. And the teacher could run at them, but their bullets are faster than running, right? And I do believe if they had a firearm, then, you know, it, they would significantly be able to deter the threat or like you said having armed guards which also deters the threat because anybody who's trying to commit a mass shooting is going to go somewhere where there are no police there are no security and there's nobody with guns that can shoot them back and the buffalo shooting i highly doubt that that dude knew that there was a guy that was currently there with the firearm that would have challenged him right well, we need to talk about that because apparently an ex-fbi agent knew about it and didn't say anything hmm. well there's always, I'm telling you, there's numerous instances of <coughs> people dropping the ball. Yeah. I mean, the fact that these people are pushing shit. But it, it, again, it's it's the culture. Nobody gives a fuck about people that are crazy, right? They only care about right. crazy fucking people when they start shooting up schools, when they start shooting up uh, grocery stores. Stabbing people, driving their cars, do fucking Christmas parades and shit like that. Exactly, which that, that the black dude, who was, he was a black supremacist, he hated white people, um... He, the guy who did the, I think it was the grocery store shooting. He said that was in direct response to that. Wow. I yeah, did he did. He, he, the dude who released the whole manifesto, he literally said that he wanted to go somewhere with the highest amount of black people. He wanted to go somewhere with the least, like with the highest gun control because he wanted to be no unchallenged. Shit, yeah, exactly. And then he also said it was in direct response to, um, the, the black dude who rammed his car into a bunch of, you know, Christmas, uh, it was like a Christmas parade. Yeah. Yeah, it was like in direct direct response to that, and he put like, uh, "Here are your reparations, BLM or whatever," on his gun. Like he put a bunch of shit like that on his gun. So, I don't know, man. I think just overall, this issue is pretty complex. It's a it's a major issue that you know could definitely be solved, but we definitely have the means to solve it. We're just being lazy with it because we have the worst politicians in the world. Yeah, and again, I think it's just we need to do. The government needs to advertise the current systems more. Officers need to have better training, which we've been saying that for forever about everything. They need to have better training and they need to have better response units for this. Because again, I don't think that this is going to be the last mass shooting in America's history. Like I highly doubt that all of a sudden, wow, it's just going to stop. But we, what we can do is tell people how to report those that are mentally unstable. We can increase security at schools and we can also institute, you know, more rigorous things to buy a gun and the sense of like i said the firearm safety stuff that like in california that you have to take um i'm completely fine with something like that you know background checks for ammo and of course you know 10-day waiting periods to prevent crimes of passion you know so it sucks i hate the 10-day wait waiting period you know when i bought my firearms but you know i understand that maybe especially in this instance where that dude had bought um like for the grocery store and for the school shooting that maybe that 10 day waiting period could have deterred them, you know? So I do think that there are current things that should be done, but I don't think banning guns is I don't think the that's first, the, first that, step. Because it doesn't solve the core aspect of what's causing this. Exactly. Which is the fucking people with severe mental health issues. Yeah. And that's just, and it's a part of our culture for people to not give a fuck yeah and it's just like what are they gonna let, let's say they ban all guns right and then all of a sudden mass stabbing out of school mass stabbings people doing the same from that christmas parade just driving their exactly cars and shit. kids graduation ran someone ran through a graduation with a car you know what i mean like dude that could easily happen at our high school that little fence that they had <laughs> protecting us from that separates the full football field from the streets yeah like that can be rammed down it's unlocked most of the time yeah that's what i'm saying it's like the the point is is if they just ban all guns they're not going to address the other issues which i'm talking about and it's just gonna 
someone's going to find something else to use. But comment down below what you guys think about this whole situation. What are your actual plans for, you know, gun control, gun reform, mental health reform, police reform, all of that? What do you think is the core issue that needs to be focused on primarily? And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Peace.